Let me do a quick tour of the data estate health capability within the new data governance experience. This is where data management really comes together in a fully integrated out-of-box experience to help CDOs and you know, federate data governance teams start to play offense and not defense. So for the CDOs out there, for the heads of data governance, for the domain owners that really want to understand the health of their data estate and their space right now, this is for you. There are a couple major sections in this um, data state health module. One is around health controls, and you can think of this as the scorecard, uh, red, green, yellow status for the health controls that you define, or if you just want to use the ones out of box that we provide. Health actions is the place where you actually go out and understand what physically needs to be fixed on data assets and data products to be able to get to healthy state. Metadata quality, you can just think about this as basically the controls, health controls editor that allows you to change the rules like a DQ rule, but allows you to change the rules about what a health control is in a very simple low code, no code experience. And then finally, there's a section for reports um, for the out-of-box reports that we provide uh, users. Let me start with the health controls page, which is essentially the CDO dashboard for the cross-tenant view of your overall health. Um, you'll notice right off the top here, there's a set of control um, summaries, and this one says there are 26 active controls. There are actually more than that on this list right now, but not all of them are in a published state. There's a set of um, controls that really give you a quick glance into what's healthy, what's not healthy, what's fair. And so it's sort of a very simple way just to actually navigate around. What you can also do in this health controls, really at the end of the day, and you'll see that little editor, it allows you to edit the definition of what health me healthy means. So imagine if I have a rule that says compliant use of data, and maybe it's something as simple as compliant use of data means um, all data has got um, a certain character on it, or it has already been approved for access, is a better example. And I've already got that measure. It's already stored in the system. You can already know it's sitting in the data model, but I want to make a def definition change. And I want to decide that, for example, that particular control is it needs to be 98%. I can set a very simple, I can override the default rules. You can see here, there's a set of default rules. You can change them. And I might want to change the score to say, you know what, the target is 98%. So I'm going to create a new rule that says if it's greater or equal to 98%, that's healthy. Anything else is unhealthy. Fairly draconian rule. I could save that, hit save, and it would actually um, go ahead and it would remember the old default rule, but it would actually use this as the new basis for the rule um, if you wanted to. And that target, just so you know, the target is where the little black line gets drawn. So you can get a sense of what you want your targets to be. Microsoft, we've provided out a box to the, the targets at 80%, but again, you have complete right to change that. The second thing I want to show you is actually, as we talked about the controls as an example, data cataloging, you have the ability to define what that means. This is just the color coding. This is the actual definition of those controls. And so I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by this low code, no code experience here. In this particular case, there is a rule under discoverability in this particular, which is called data product um, connection. that says every data product has to have an asset count of have to have an asset count. It can't be zero. So if you remember back in Shishma's demo, she talked about how a data product can have multiple assets. You can also have data products that are in unpublished state with zero assets. Maybe you're setting up your data governance department very first time. Maybe you are trying to redo your data map um, and have an attached assets to it. That's fine. But that's the point here where you get to define what that looks like. And this will control the rule that gets triggered. You can add new rules and begin in, in an out-of-box experience. Um, that you that we provide a bunch of rules. And you can also just pick the same rules and you can also change the rules. And so if I decide I want to be able to make this rule this is greater than one, in which case I have to hit edit. I can have a rule that says greater than one. And so assets greater than one would actually all of a sudden be the trigger. There's also a reset button on the top. Um, we've noticed that uh, sometimes you get yourself into a position where um, you can change a bunch of rules and maybe they conflict with each other. So we provided a very simple reset back to the default settings that we provide out of box in the event that you uh, need to uh, start over. But the, the thing about the health controls and metadata health controls here is that you can change the definitions of all of them. You'll see that there are six major or eight major areas, access and use, discoverability, curation, data health observability, business value creation, 
trusted data, and metadata quality. These health controls largely align to industry norms. Um, you know, these are, are very close alignment with EDMs, CDMC controls, or cloud data management framework controls. And so hopefully you can see that. We've just provided them in a pivot that we think that made, made the reports easy to understand. My next thing I want to go to that I think is probably the most important uh, or the second most important feature in this capability is the health is the action center. And this is the single destination for you to understand the CDO office as well as federal owners to understand what actions you need to take to get your data state healthy. Right now, the default view is across all domains. So which is a CDO, you'd want to be able to have it across your entire tenant, but you can certainly change that to look at an individual domain. It gives you a summary view of all the different health control, of all the different um, health actions you need to take. And uh, you can actually also add filters and do finding and finding type. If you wanted to see more details, if you wanted to understand, if you wanted to understand more details or maybe zoom in some to one particular set of controls, for maybe one particular domain. So this allows you to basically filter um, uh, ways to know what, what actions that you need to take. Again, this can be this can be overwhelming in, in a large data estate, which is why they provide we provide so much filtering. You can actually go into individual areas and see um, the actually specific actions. And this is the most important part. You can see the specific finding for the control all the way to which asset it gets a data product that needs to get attached to. So it gives a very clear indication around what data products need to be cleaned up. You can change the grouping over here as well. You can filter by keywords, just easy ways to find this, especially if this number of controls end up becoming in the thousands range, that's what the filters are for. The most important part about this, the thing that I'm most excited about is you now have a single destination for you to understand how to go from red to green in your data state. You can communicate that to every federal owner to say, go here. This is what you need to do to get green in your scorecard because every single one of these changes and fixes drive this overall score. The other thing that's very, very interesting about this one here is you can actually, in addition to see what the actual work items need to be done, you actually can assign owners to those items. So let's say you have a data health item that needs to have an owner. I can go ahead and add someone. Let's say I'm going to add my friend here who is doing our demos. I can add him, hit save, and boom, it'll be assigned to him and there'll be a notification to him to say, here's something for you to clean up. Again, back to that point I made about going from playing defense to playing offense. This is how we believe you can go into the position as a CDO officer or a federal data governance office owner, you can go into the offense and be able to get your data state clean. My final update I wanna show you is actually we'll provide a set of out-of-box reports. There's actually two kinds of reports. For those of you use the previous Azure Purview product, there's a set of reports that you've seen before that come out of box. And these are the ones that were in the previous product that we went ahead and brought forward because they're still useful. There's a set of new data, pro there's a set of new reports that are coming. There's a data governance scorecard, which is also very useful to understand, essentially project what you see in the health controls report, but in the form of a Power BI dashboard, if you wanted to run that, for example, in the middle of the rhythm of the business or some sort of meeting, you can drill down. All of these are also available down at the detailed level, so you can actually understand what data products are missing and not meeting what controls as well. Again, it's just a Power BI reflection of what you can see in the health controls as well. All these reports right now, there's a data model that sits behind it. So in the future, next several months, we're going to be offering the ability actually for you to be able to create your own sets of reports and host them in this same UX shell because the same exact data model that we use to write these reports are also available to you as users. Well, thank you very much for the data state health section here, and I hope you're excited as excited about it as I am.